Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is a podcast for you. Welcome back to the podcast. I'm Lee Brown, and this is Crazy Shit in Real Estate. Today, we have one of the best-known home inspectors in the entire country. He hails from the sunny state of Florida, and welcome Wally Conway to the show. Good morning. Thank you so much, Lee. I'm happy to be with you. So, Wally, I would imagine that as a home inspector, you get to see all kinds of crazy things that you just you can't unsee. Lee, we see lots and lots of crazy things, and as importantly, we hear some really crazy things. Oh, do tell. Well, you may recall, or your grandma may have shared with you, long ago in black and white, there was a fine television program by Art Linkletter. had a feature called Kids Say the Darndest Thing. Is that familiar to you? Well, I have seen it in reruns and on YouTube clips, you know, because I am just so young. I completely understand that. Well, I've come to the conclusion after 22 years and 30,000 home inspections that not only do kids say the darndest things, there are days that real estate agents say the darndest things. Did you say 30,000 home inspections? That's a lot of houses. 30,000 home inspections, and that adds up to uh, nearly 60,000 real estate agents and plenty of opportunity to hear fascinating things. Oh, well, what's the, what's the craziest thing you've run into or heard? Crazy is rather relative, but I'll share a story with you from just a few years ago. Here in Jacksonville, one of the most exclusive parts of town, certainly in a historic sense, is the, the area of Ortega. Beautiful waterfront community, homes built in the 30s. They're, they're just gorgeous. One of the things I've discovered over these 30,000 houses is at the high end, wealthier people, their decorators never tell them no. They just go with whatever theme seems exciting to the person and kind of liberates a little bit of money for the decorator. Well, they don't have budgets at that price point, I don't think. If they have them, they're quite high. As it turns out, this particular person who was preparing to sell the home, they had, uh, shortly after they originally moved in, taken the theme of the color plum through the entirety of the home. So it, it almost felt like you were maybe lost in a bottle of Cabernet. It was a really uncomfortable place to be. That sounds like a realtor home, though, if you're in a bottle of wine, I'm just saying. (laughs) It was right for some, not right for many. Anyway, the listing agent finally persuaded the the home seller to do something and and more neutralize the color in the home. It was a big place, probably six or 7,000 square feet. So they had a team of Eastern European painters in there doing just a bang-up job. Simultaneous with that, the listing agent had suggested that they also have a home inspection as a piece of, the, of that whole listing presentation. That was another great idea. So there I was, uh, no buyer at this point, a large collection of painters, myself, and the listing agent. So I'm going through the house, doing what we typically do, how the lights going and all the other things turned on. And one of the painters came over and said, hey, Wally, I smell smoke. Even someone who's not a home inspector knows that where there's smoke, there's likely... Fire, fire, fire. fire. Yeah, and fire is not good, especially during the home inspection. So I get zipping around the house trying to locate the source of the, uh, the smoke and ultimately the fire. So I'm going around the exterior of the home. I didn't find anything on the inside that was burning. And where the electric meter mounts to the side of the house, that meter can, as we would call it, there's fire coming out of the electric meter can. Not that a, is not a good place for fire to be. Not no, that there's no, a really no. good place, but that's bad. <laughs> it's always bad. So the listing agent, being dutiful, beautiful, and wanting to be helpful, she trotted it right up behind me, and I said, ah, I'm glad you're here. You call the fire department. I'll call the utility to get power secured. In the meantime, I'll shut all the power here at the house, you know, on the main breaker. She goes, right, let's do it. So she begins her thing of the, calling the fire department, and she looks back at me, and she says, Wally, you can't secure the power. I'm like, well, why not? She says, if you secure the power, the painters will never be able to finish today. Oh, well, she was right. I mean, you got to give her, give her credit for thinking about all the moving pieces here. <laughs> you know, you kind of got to look at the big picture, and I casually and calmly explained to her, as home inspectors are known to do, ma'am, 
if we don't secure the power, there'll be no house here for the painters to paint. Bless her heart. She was trying to keep the project moving forward, Wally. She just, you know, figured the, the fire was going to sort itself out. Well, it, it did have a happy ending. We did <laughs> secure the power. Fire trucks arrived. There was nothing really for them to put out. Once we secured the power, that stopped the whole thing. Smoke blew out. Painters finished up a day late. Homes long ago sold, and everyone lived happily ever after. Hey, so I have a question for you. Since you mentioned that you were inspecting this house before it went on the market, what's your home inspector viewpoint on should you or should you not inspect a house before it goes on the market? Well, I'll share a deeper thought. A few years ago, I wrote a program for the National Association of Realtors called The Compelling Case for Listing Inspections. And it turns out there's data that supports the thought that a home that is inspected at the time of listing sells in less time and for closer to asking price. And translating that into agent ease, it means a payday that comes sooner and is larger. I guess the the caveat to all that would be if your home inspector is a reasonable person who's not a fear monger, right? Well, it's it's interesting. Even if he were a fear monger, and we would hope not, there's no direct contact with the buyer. It's strictly creation of the document for the purposes of disclosure. The other thing the document, that inspection report document really helps is, as the agent, you never want to be the person that has to tell the seller that their baby's ugly and not quite worth what they wish. What ends up happening is the inspection supports what you already know as the agent that these are its imperfections, and then you can speak to the document while you're getting that price positioning as though it's evil, not you for being the messenger. Excellent viewpoint. Awesome. Wally, thank you for telling us about uh, houses of fire, too much plum, and we always say just bless the realtors who kind of lose sight of the bigger picture because they mean well to heart. Absolutely. But if we have anybody listening to the show who happens to have a need of home inspection expertise in Jacksonville, Florida, how could they find you? The easiest way online, MrHomeInspection.com. And I'd be happy to provide the transcript of that actual compelling case for listing inspection, as well as the audio. You can share it with anyone you like. Well, that's fantastic. So, listeners, I'm going to include all of Wally's information in the show notes if you have need of reaching him or just have questions in general about his program that he put together. And if you are listening to the podcast and you're a realtor, an inspector, a vendor, a lender, a broker of some sort, or a consumer who would like to tell the world about the crazy things you have encountered in real estate that does not look like that polished up stuff from HGTV, shoot me a message and we'll be glad to feature you on the show as we continue to show the world what real estate really looks like in our efforts to make it better for everybody. Wally, thank you for being on the show. And to all my listeners, we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us this week on the Crazy Shit in Real Estate podcast. If you liked what you heard, please visit crazyshitinrealestate.com where you can access the full show notes for this episode, additional content produced exclusively for listeners, and much, much more.